Hello, I'm Panos, a PhD candidate from George Mason University, and I'm going to present you our work, uh, SOK Blockchain Like Lions, uh, joint work with my advisor, Fotini, and uh, Kostas Halkias from uh, Misten. Uh, so, as most of you might know, uh, in blockchain systems today, uh, there are three main types of uh, participants. Uh, we first have the full nodes who are responsible for maintaining the blockchain in their local storage um, and also fa facilitate the communication with all participants in a network level, uh, typically in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion or using uh, gossip protocols accordingly. Uh, then we have the validators or sometimes referred to as miners who are responsible for maintaining the consensus layer uh, I am leaving those uh, abstract for now, since their exact functions uh, largely depend on the consensus type, if it is permissioned, less or permissioned, proof of work, proof of stake, uh, BFT, etc., etc. And finally, we have uh, the blockchain clients who can just make queries to the blockchain uh, or submit transactions. And these functionalities are typically done through the full nodes. So in the normal case, uh, before even submitting those queries or transactions, uh, the client needs to first download the whole blockchain, uh, which means all those blocks B1 through BN, uh, store them into disk, then uh, look at each block uh, separately and verify that the blockchain has evolved correctly, uh, which also means verifying parts of the consensus mechanism. However, now we consider the case uh, where the client has limited resources, uh, which is usually called the light client the blockchain community. Uh, so maybe it is connected over a cellular network uh, where downloading gigabytes of data is too expensive uh, or just doesn't have the available disk storage for that. Uh, also the CPU power uh, or, or energy resources uh, might be limited. Uh, so performing this uh, verification on every single block uh, the client fetch from the full nodes uh, might also be too costly for the client. Uh, and also, uh, think of the case where the client is a smart contract, uh, where by design all of the above resources are very scarce and costly. Okay, so what can we do now? Uh, well, the easy way out for the client is just to place trust on a full node, uh, have that node do a heavy li lifting, uh, which means download and verify all this blockchain data, uh, which normally it should be doing anyway, and make a leap of faith that uh, everything that node serves to the client is correct. Uh, of course, this is not the ideal way to interact uh, in the blockchain world, so we need to do something better. Okay, so to have some, uh, uh, to save some resources for the client. Uh, there is uh, the so-called SPV client, uh, Simplified Payment Verification, which originates back from the original Bitcoin white paper. And here the client, instead of downloading the full blocks, it uh, just fetches the block headers, which are very small compared to the whole block. Uh, then those headers to, uh, they use it, uh, those headers to verify the evolution of the blockchain. And now since the client doesn't have the full blocks, uh, whenever it needs to make a query, uh, it requests the, the assistance of a full node. Uh, so, for example, uh, this could mean that the client would just have to um, a Merkle root and the full node would need to provide uh, the leaf and the Merkle proof to the client. Uh, so, this type of client is the most commonly known in the blockchain community. Uh, however, this type of light client might still be considered costly in certain cases. So there have been uh, some different ways to implement a light client. Uh, for example, compressing some elements uh, from the blockchain and have the client uh, work with only those compressed data. Uh, or even the case where the blockchain just uh, is a second uh, representation, which is sometimes called a stateless blockchain. And the client no longer needs to do all those operations we saw before. Uh, still, there is no single definition of a light client. And there are different perceptions of what a light client is, um, even if we are, the, we are in the same category of such techniques. Uh, for example, Ethereum's uh, official light client, which follows the SPV approach, 
uh, also has some elements of a full node in it. Uh, which brings us uh, to the first question we need to answer. Uh, what is a light client? Uh, is it just an app of a mobile wallet uh, when we are talking about the cryptocurrency? Um, is it maybe a lighter version of the standard client of uh, each blockchain uh, where some elements have been stripped away? Is it maybe a lighter full node such an, as in Ethereum? Uh, and the question is how far we want to go. Are we are willing to give up some uh, security of uh, or decentralization, which is uh, all what a uh, blockchain is about in the first place? And finally, we should not neglect uh, the associated costs that come uh, for the full nodes or the validators uh, to support the light client we want. Okay, so first broadly define what a light client is. Uh, so of course, a light client uh, means efficiency which in turn means that all those costs we saw, downloading and storing the needed blockchain data to bootstrap and maintain the client, and also the computation costs are sublinear to the blockchain size. Uh, then ideally, we want a minimal overhead to the rest of the blockchain actors to support the client and try not to deviate from the decentralization paradigm. And finally, we would like to avoid the introducing additional assumptions uh, such as a trusted setup, uh, rational behavior of the blockchain participants, etc. As well as keep the whole system simplified, uh, which means uh, we don't want to introduce other types of uh, actors in the system. So uh, let's now see some versions of flat clients that exist, which are work uh, considered. Uh, so first, uh, we need to go back to the SPV client, uh, which uh, in a proof of work consensus, it just verifies the block headers. Um, however, if there is uh, another type of consensus involved, uh, the idea is not, not that simple. Uh, for example, if proof of stake, uh, the client normally needs to know and verify the stake for each account that was involved in the committee. And in a permission type of consensus, such as BFT, uh, where the validator set typically changes over time, uh, the client also needs to verify that the validator set evolved uh, correctly over the whole blockchain history. And in such cases, uh, one some common solution is to have some sort of uh, checkpointing functionality, uh, which saves the client from having to go and verify all the way back to the genesis. Another class of approaches for implementing uh, light clients, as we saw before, is to compress the blockchain state, uh, which means, for example, to prune obsolete data, uh, which directly helps in downloading and storing less data. Uh, but for some systems, uh, do, uh, do compressions uh, using uh, some additional cryptographic primitives, uh, for example, aggregate uh, signatures or zero knowledge proofs, such as in uh, Plumo. Uh, which uh, help save bandwidth and storage and do the checkpointing proofs in a succinct way. Uh, now, if we do, if we do the so-called uh, stateless blockchain approach, uh, this is naturally very light client-friendly uh, because we will forget about downloading and verifying uh, all the blocks in history. Uh, and some of the systems that follow this approach uh, are Mina, the previous called uh, Coda. Uh, which uses uh, SNARKs in a recursive uh, fashion, and uh, Edrax uh, cryptocurrency, which has a commitment uh, to the state based on either uh, vector commitments or uh, sparse uh, Merkle trees, uh, depending on the account, the account mode, uh, UTXO or account-based. The problem here is, again, that the consensus evolution, for example, MINA ut utilizes a special type of uh, proof-of-stake uh, to accommodate the problem with uh, uh, proof-of-stake consensus. There is also a whole different approach to implement a light client, which is based on the naive idea we saw in one of the first slides, uh, where the client just interacts uh, with a full node and trusts it fully. Uh, this approach requires a smart contract uh, acting as an intermediary between the light client and the full node. And this smart contract uh, has uh, some funds locked into it as a collateral. And uh, basically, you can remove trust from the node uh, since the client assumes that the node will behave honestly 
Uh, otherwise, the smart uh, contract will uh, penalize the node. So we have seen all these uh, approaches. Uh, in our work, we performed our systematization along uh, those three axes, uh, which examine the functional and basic operations of the client, uh, the security and the efficiency, both of the client and the system as a whole. And based on those axes, we have the corresponding tables which uh, illustrate the system uh, properties. Uh, these are the functional and basic operations uh, where we say that uh, uh, system uh, supporting a light client is built for a specific type of consensus. Uh, if they are compatible with existing with existing uh, systems, which we prefer, uh, if they require modifications or if they propose a new standalone system, and uh, if they use some special cryptographic primitives. And then we have a table to show the efficiency of those systems we considered, uh, both for the client and for the system itself. Uh, disclaimer here, this is not meant to be as uh, a direct comparison. Uh, this is impossible uh, as the clients operate on top of uh, different underlying uh, schemes. Uh, but we just provide a coarse uh, categorization indicated uh, with those thumbs up or thumbs down icons. And finally, we have the security axis, which show if the system has additional assumptions and uh, if it satisfies our security definitions. So uh, this is the kind of information you will find in our paper, and I'm welcome you to read it to see all those more, all those in more detail. Uh, okay, so now we have all these systems and light clients. Uh, the question is if we have uh, we are there yet, and if not, uh, what elements or properties are still missing? Uh, and I present here some challenges and gaps we found in these uh, three different categories. Uh, in a client level, in a blockchain and system level, and the privacy level. So at a, a client level, the first observation is that uh, we don't have a proof of uh, non-existence for a light client. Uh, for example, a client might query if a specific transaction exists uh, or not, and require a proof in both cases. Uh, the only system that can do this as of today is the one that uses a smart contract as an intermediary between the client and the full node, uh, which is basically a trick to circumvent the trust assumption of the naive solution. But uh, other than that, uh, other systems do not support it. Uh, then we would like to have a light client that is uh, interoperable with several uh, different blockchain systems. So basically, we, we need a light client that can be light enough to work as a smart contract uh, and work across uh, many blockchains. Uh, and the only system that considers this, uh, this a bit uh, is uh, Cosmos. Still at the client level, we observed that uh, none of the systems explicitly consider the client, which goes to sleep and reconnects very frequently which can be a very common case, for example, in uh, mobile clients. Uh, so a system might be efficient for bootstrapping the client, but what happens next uh, when the client needs to remain in sync? Uh, that is another issue. And uh, also specifically for systems based on uh, BFT consensus, uh, these systems uh, need those uh, epoch proofs to preserve uh, security. And the question is if those proofs which are uh, an overhead can be compressed, uh, or get rid of entirely. If we now move away for the, from the client and consider the systems as a whole, uh, we observed that uh, the majority of the systems uh, neglect the overhead of, to the rest of the blockchain participants we discussed uh, previously. For example, uh, doing uh, those uh, recursive snarks can be very costly for the prover, and uh, only one or one work consider this to be this problem. Finally, another question is how are light clients implementing the privacy preserving systems uh, such as uh, Zcash? Uh, so, sure, it has the flight, flight client implemented, uh, which improves the SPV approach. Uh, but the question is uh, could we do stateless Zcash and, and therefore have a very efficient light client? And this paper from 2020 uh, provides some directions. But the question remains, uh, who will be responsible for providing uh, the incremental proofs 
and what will be the over, overall overhead in a system which is already quite uh, cumbersome. So to summarize, uh, we saw that the term uh, light client has quite a broad interpretation in the blockchain world. And in our work, uh, we made some effort to unify the landscape and provide some definitions of uh, what a light client is. And based on our definitions, we identified a number of uh, research gaps, which we believe uh, will help advance the state of the art towards uh, usable and uh, secure light clients and blockchain systems. And again, please uh, read our paper, which is on here for more details. And thank you very much for watching this presentation.